Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 95 with me Craig Barton. Now something quite different uh, this week on the Resource of the Week. Um, over the last few weeks I've tended to feature kind of comprehensive resources, resources that boxed off a lot of things. So last week we had a wonderful Core 1 resource that covered the whole of Core 1 and could be used with uh, high ability Year 11 students. The week before we had the wonderfully titled Loads of Starters, which literally was loads of starters that covered everything from year seven to six form. Uh, this week I want to focus on something specific and um, it's a wonderful activity. Now this isn't going to be to everyone's taste and as I've said in my description um, on the Tes Maths blog um, this isn't to be used with all classes. You need a certain type of class who are going to kind of embrace and go with this um, and by that I'm not necessarily talking about high ability. I'm talking about keenness. Classes who are willing to have a go. Robustness is another word that kind of kind of springs to mind. Students who aren't going to be afraid to make mistakes ask questions and try things. Um, it probably would be aimed at a relatively high ability uh, year 11 class or certainly um, a year 12 or 13 class um, and it's a brilliant way to, to introduce students to uh, graphs of trigonometric functions and their related transformations or to revise or consolidate understanding of that in kind of an interesting interesting concept. Uh, context, sorry. So it's been created by SR Whitehouse, one of my favourite uh, resource creators, some really quality re resources produced uh, by this author. And it's called Mathematical Modelling Activity, and it consists of a PowerPoint and three word files. So let's take a look at it. So we take a look at the power, uh, PowerPoint first. Imagine there's a mark of tip X on a bicycle tire. Think about the height of the mark above the ground as the bike moves. So there's your kind of hook to the students. Um, what what would kind of the locus of that be? How would it how would it move around? And again, what I like about this resource here is there's, there's lots of prompts for discussion, um, lots of kind of supporting questions just in case students are completely stuck. Because I don't know about you, but I, I personally would find that relatively hard to visualise. And then this PowerPoint kind of takes you through the structure of the lesson mini white balls try and stretch it uh, y-axis um, height above the ground x-axis time and so on and you end up with a with a beautiful uh, trigonometric graph like that now that's quite nice that because I, I'm no I'm no physicist so I struggle to relate uh, trig graphs to kind of sound waves and all that kind of stuff so tip x on a bike is, is more my kind of level and then here comes the twist so once the kids have got their head around that then they get an, a load of other different scenarios to do so what about that now how does this graph change if the bike is moving twice as fast Will it go twice as high? What will happen there? What about that tip X mark is halfway down a spoke? Or just to make life even uh, trickier, after the bike has been traveling for one second, it skids for half a second. How's that going to affect what's going on there? So loads of different scenarios for the students to think about. Now imagine the kind of discussion that would, would happen there and the kind of disagreement students would have and the way they'd need to argue and justify. It really would promote really positive high level discussion in the classroom. Uh, once students have done that, um, or as an alternative, you can give the students, uh, present them with five different graphs and get them to try and match it to the scenarios described there. So there's your kind of support if you want to give it. That's as open-ended as it can get. Here are five scenarios, try and sketch it. And then if students need some support or you want to go down this route, you can give them that and then try and get them to match it up. And then finally, if you're feeling particularly brave, and although this might be something that you might reserve for either your most uh, high ability students or your A-level students, is you've actually got the equations of the graphs there. Now, I think this is lovely because not only does this link, link into transformations of graphs, but something like this top one here, that's not coming up at GCSE and it's probably not coming up at A level, but that's no reason not to give that to students and get them to just to play around. What do they think that does? Get them to sub numbers in, sub zero in for T, well, what's the height of the, the graph at that point? And they can play around with that and by a process of elimination, figure out which graph it, it refers to. Look at that, the first time probably students have seen a split function or a piecewise function. Just absolutely lovely stuff there. And then you get graphs such as three, which is probably not too tricky a transformation or one for, for students to spot even at GCSE level. I mean, there's loads of stuff going on there, stretches, translations and so on. But this might be a good way just to introduce it to them in a practical, engaging context. So I really like this resource. Um, I've made the point many times, um, both on TES and when I give speech, uh, kind of speeches at workshops and stuff, that I hate it when real life is kind of forced into mathematical activities. Um, I much prefer activities that say, yeah, this is a maths activity. There's no kind of relation to real life. And I relate this to, 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 to that. I think that falls into this category as well. I mean, that is not your classic real life scenario. I'm going to mark some tip on a bike. There's no practical use to that, but it's an engaging, interesting scenario 
scenario to kind of put the problem into some kind of context that the students can relate to and then they can try and solve it not because it's going to change the world them solving it but because it's an interesting challenging engaging problem for them to solve so as i say you've got to have the right class to do this with but i think this would be just such a wonderful activity um also fire up desmos and um, have that on the side uh, just to get students uh, just when you get these equations and um, just to plot them on desmos just to see um, do they in fact match the graphs and also you can then experiment by changing some of the variables what happens if that 0.3 suddenly becomes a 0.5 how does the graph change likewise if that 0.3 became a minus 0.3 what would happen to the graph and so on it just lends itself well to questions by students and if you have something like desmos up there you can instantly change it so uh, a wonderful activity as i say it's not going to be for everybody but i just thought it was absolutely superb i've not seen anything uh, quite like that so i hope you like that and i'll be back with a fresh resource of the week next week in the meantime take care of yourselves and bye for now